What's up, everybody? My name is Alfie Marsh, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Toolflow AI. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI tool that will help you generate case studies for your website based off of interviews that you do with your customers using AI and completely for free. In a nutshell, we're going to take interviews that you do with your customers. So just like this one, if we head over to spendesk.com and look at their customer testimonials, Spendesk is my former employer, and we can go and look at any one of these. So let's open up this one with Malt. It's basically going through and explaining how Malt use Spendesk to overcome a particular challenge. These are great for social proof and getting better conversion on your websites, helping salespeople sell your product and services, but they can take a while to generate. You sometimes have to interview the people, that might take half an hour, you then take the transcript, you've then got to write up the actual post itself and find the good bits. Now we can do pretty much all of that after you've recorded it with AI by building a simple tool. So if you haven't already, you can head over to toolflow.ai and you can sign up to create your free account. We're currently in beta um, and I'm going to go and click on login and I've already got an account. And once we've logged in, it's going to take you to the marketplace. So a bit of an overview for what is Toolflow. Toolflow is a platform that's going to allow you to build AI tools and workflows to help you power through work. But it's also got a marketplace where other people are building tools and you can find and leverage them in there. So we're going to go to the marketplace and here is a case study generator. So it's this second tool here. We can recreate something similar to what we saw on this website. So this tool opens up in the workspace and I can go ahead and upload pigment. This is the call cool recording. And there's a few different fields that this tool asks for. So the first one is keywords. So AI is going to use a speech to text model to be able to transcribe the audio. Sometimes, however, it gets spelling mistakes, well, spelling incorrect. So, for example, Spendesk sometimes gets mispronounced for spandex. Quite funny, but not very good if you're building a case study. So we might want to type in Spendesk as a keyword and make sure that AI picks it up. We'll put in pigment, and it could be other terms like VAT, so value-added tax, very specific industry jargon. Now, the rest of the fields here, we need to enter in the customer company's name, so in this case, uh, pigment, and then the vendor name. So in this case, it's Spendesk. Now, the next two fields are asking for the website URLs. And the reason it's doing this is because this tool is also going to scrape both of those websites, pull out information, and then we're going to use that information as part of the testimonial. And this is how you get really high quality outputs. So let's put in the customer website, which is uh, pigment.com. And then let's put in the vendor website, which is spendes.com. And lastly, it's going to ask for brand voice. Now, brand voice is basically how is this tone of voice for the case study going to be written in? And you want it to sound like your own company's writing. So we could write casual and conversational as an example, but we could also uh, input a pre-saved uh, example. So I already have a brand voice written for Toolflow. And if I just enter that down here on the workspace you'll be able to see that there is basically a snippet of text which uh, describes my brand voice and i actually made this uh, in a brand voice generator tool but we'll save that for another video so now we've entered in all of those details we're going to go ahead and run the tool now whilst this is running i'm going to open up the tool sort of behind the scenes so you can do that in a couple of ways if you click on these six dots to the left of the tool you'll get duplicate for me I've already got this tool I own it so I can just edit it directly for you if you go to the marketplace you always have to duplicate tools before you can edit them so I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I've already got it opened up here you can see it's case study generator on the top left so there's a few things that are happening in this tool. We first transcribe the audio into text and we use a speech to text model called Deepgram to do that. We then take the vendor website, so Spendesk, and we scrape it using the web scraper block. And when we've got the content of that website, we actually send that into a chat GPT block where we go into extract information like propositions, uh, value propositions, product information, so on. 
and then we do exactly the same thing for the customer website to generate an overview and then we wrap all of this up in one big prompt where we're actually going to use Claude to write the testimonial. So if I head back over to this screen it should output very shortly. And here we go. So that has now outputted the full case study and as you can see we've got uh, the title here, we've got some key results, we've got an overview. This overview, the interview that was actually recorded, obviously you didn't get to listen to it, but it didn't actually mention anything about pigment. So, which is very often the case when we're recording interviews with our customers, there's not a lot of information about them or their the vendor in that call. And so we need to get this information by scraping their websites. We then go into the challenge section, then into the solution, and then the results. And hey presto, we have our case study. Now you can come over and create a free account uh, and use this directly in uh, the marketplace for free. However, if you did want to build this, uh, I can show you pretty much how to recreate this in a couple of easy steps. So step one is to open up the tool builder on the left hand side. So we're going to open up the builder and we're going to start with the speech to text block. The speech to text block, we're going to call this customer interview transcript. And this block is going to take an audio file or video file and turn it into a transcript. But to do that, we need to get a file. And so we actually need to ask the user to give us a file. And so we're going to create this over here. It says file to transcribe. We need to create a user input. And that basically is saying it's going to create a field on the front end so that a user can send us the file. And we're going to call this customer interview recording. And we save. Now, as I mentioned, there was the keywords. So we can either hard code keywords into the tool, for example, like Spendesk here, but we don't really want to do that because we might use this tool for lots of different companies. What we can do instead is ask the user to give us a keyword each time. And so we, again, create this user input here and we're going to call this keywords. Now, there's some other settings at the bottom that you can save, but we don't really need them. So let's go ahead and save this case study generate a tool demo and I just want to open this up so you can see what it looks like on the front end as I'm building this tool. So now you can see there are, there are just two fields now, the upload field for the file and then the keywords. Now obviously on the other one there was a lot more so let's continue. We'll click on the six dots, go back into edit. Now the next step is to scrape the company's website, so the vendor's website. So we're going to get the web scraper and we're going to call this vendor website content. Now for this web scraper block, we actually need a URL. And again, we want to ask the user for the URL. So we're going to click ask user for URL and we're going to call this uh, vendor website URL. That's it. All we need to do here. Now, this block is going to give you the output of that website, which is going to be uh, a big load of text. So we actually can choose HTML, text, and markdown. So markdown is going to give us the formatting too, so we're going to want that. Now, the next step is dragging the text generation block over, which we've done, and we want to connect them. Now, if I don't connect them, I'll show you why uh, we want to connect them. Let's just change this name to vendor a summary. And we can change the model from OpenAI, which is the guys behind ChatGPT. We can change it from 3.5 and use their latest one, GPT-4. But we can now basically write a prompt. So I could write a prompt such as summarize this website content. But if I do this, the prompt is not referencing any website content. So I need to pull in the content we've scraped. Now, the way I can do this is doing forward slash and then I can pull in things from elsewhere, so either from the user inputs or from the tool. But you'll notice that in the inputs there's keywords and there's vendor website URL, but there isn't vendor website content. And the reason for that is because we haven't yet connected the blocks. So I'm going to connect the blocks, and if I do this now, you can see that vendor website content is there. Now there is a reason why that isn't shown straight away and you need to connect it, but for the time being we won't worry about that. Now, I'm going to go over and just delete this and I'm going to copy the prompt that I've got already here. And if you want to see what happens behind the scenes, feel free to jump into the tool and you can see this. 
I'm just going to make sure I delete my reference there because it's got a different name and I'm just going to make sure the reference is correct. Now we want to do exactly the same thing for the customer website and I'm just going to skip through this because it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so now the last step, if we go back to our tool here, is we want to write the full customer uh, testimony. And so we're going to use one last prompt where we pull in the transcripts, the overview of the company, both the vendor as well as the customer. So we're going to pull in one last text generation box down here. And we're going to call this customer case study. Now, we want to change the model from OpenAI to Anthropic, who have a model called Claude. Uh, and we like this because it's got a much nicer writing style. Now, again, what we need to do here is connect these summaries from the vendor as well as the customer name. So let's just change customer summary. Um, and we also want the transcript. So we need to connect these blocks. So let's connect the transcript and let's connect these blocks down here too. Now we can start writing a prompt that pulls them all together into one field. Now instead of just uh, referencing them here, for example, uh, vendor summary forward slash uh, customer summary, we don't want to do that. We need to give some better formatting. And the reason being is this summary is just going to be like an overview of the company. But if we just insert that into a prompt without saying this is the start of the summary and this is the end of the summary, it's very hard for these language models to know, OK, is this a prompt? Is this some instructions? Is this some context? So we want to format it so we know exactly what we're telling these prompts. So instead, what we're going to do is use XML tags. So an XML tag looks like this. And we can say, for example, vendor summary. And then on the next line, we can forward slash pull in the vendor summary. And then we use this, again, XML tag with a forward slash to represent the end of the summary. And then type vendor summary again. And there we go, we close the brackets. So now, <clears throat> effectively, what's going to happen there is, as you can see down here, if I zoom in, this is what the prompt is going to look like. So if the vendor summary was Spendesk is a spend management tool, now you can see that in the prompt that actually gets sent, it's enclosed in XML tags and it's much more easy for the AI to read. So we're going to go ahead and again copy this prompt. And I can talk you through very briefly how the prompt is made. I'm just going to clean this up and make sure it's referencing the right references. So you'll notice that these are called maybe slightly different things. And so, for example, this is called vendor overview and not vendor summary. So these references, because I've copied and pasted them, they won't work. So we actually need to delete these references and we need to make sure we use the correct ones here. So customer overview. And we're going to call it a customer summary, vendor, oh, vendor overview, vendor summary. And again, brand voice. So brand voice is an interesting one. So the prompt has a brand voice in there. But if you remember, we haven't actually created this input called brand voice yet. So if I do forward slash, you'll see that there is no brand voice as an input. Now, what we could do is create an input directly from here, call it brand voice. And again, we want this to be a text field because it allows them to enter in their own, you know, free form. We could do a drop down and say, you know, give some options, casual and fun, you know, witty and humorous, for example. But we don't want to do that because we've actually got some pretty comprehensive brand voice text that we want to add. So we're just going to create this one here. 
Now, one last thing. I did this uh, very briefly, but if you want to look at all your inputs that you have in the tool, both the ones that are blocks in the tool and the inputs you're also asking from the user, you can just go over to the input tab here and you'll see customer interview transcript is a file upload and we can give these descriptions and so on and so forth. Now, there is some other cleaning up to do in this prompt. For example, I reference the customer name and some other things. So I'm just going to clean this up. And if you give me one second. Okay, so just to explain what's happening in this prompt, I can open this screen up a little bit wider. So you can now see all the inputs that are being used in this prompt and we could test them here if we wanted to. But to give you an understanding, I'm basically one big master prompt is going to take the overview of the customer, the overview of the vendor, we've got the brand voice and we've also got the transcript of the call recording. We then have a context section of the prompt where we say you are an expert B2B marketer, exceptionally good at writing customer testimonials. The task then talks about writing this customer testimonial with certain sections. And then we go through each part of the customer testimonial, i.e. the title, the key results section, the challenge section, as well as the uh, solution and results. And we give very clear instructions as to what should happen in each section. And then finally, we give it some formatting guidelines. And the formatting guidelines are basically showing you how to how the output should look. So we have the title in H1. Again, this is using the hashtag or the pound sign here where the space is going to use markdown. And we're telling them exactly where they should input their text. And that's it. So we can now save this and open the tool. And the tool is ready. And you will now be able to generate case studies at will just by uploading a customer interview and then filling out the information about their websites. So if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a message at alfie, A-L-F-I-E, at toolflow.ai. We also have a Slack community where we can teach you this sort of stuff. Um, and let us know what you want to build. We have the power of AI in our hands and it is a very exciting time. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in next time. Ciao.